What does it take to make plants grow? We're going to look at 10 different items that are critical to plant growth, some of which you probably have never heard about before. A research group on Discord has developed some understanding about the process that is breakthrough knowledge for those trying to plant and grow plants. You're it, Father Fish. So the very first one I want to talk about is the symbiotic relationship that plants have with bacteria. Plants release hormones. Those hormones trigger certain activities in certain kinds of bacteria to produce what for the bacteria is a waste product, which is precisely what the plant needs for that stage of its growth. In other words, if a plant is growing roots, it releases a hormone. That hormone attacks a certain species of bacteria. In so doing, that bacteria then produces the very material, the very elements that the plant needs in order to grow roots. Similarly, stems, leaves, flowers, seeds, each of these stages in the plant's development require a different, it's a different fertilizer, but it's not a fertilizer. It's a different compound that allows them to grow that specific part of their plant. When we use fertilizers, we stop that process. And in fact, the fertilizer overwhelms the process by creating a chemical soup that overwhelms everything else. So if we're putting nitrogen fertilizer in the soil, it's overwhelming everything else and stopping the symbiotic relationship that the plants have with the bacteria. Now, clearly, if your tank has no bacteria in it, then fertilizer becomes your only option. But if your tank does have bacteria and a wide variety of bacteria growing in it, then the plant is able to create the very material that it needs. So how do we achieve all that? Well, it's really very simple. That's what the deep substrate is all about. We do mud, but we don't just do mud. We add to that mud humus. We add to it a rich compost, which may be pond mud. It may simply be one or another kind of compost. And of course, soil. But then the magic ingredient is the multiple materials that are included in the supplement package that has come to be known as the Father Fish Supplement. I have videos about this explaining precisely what they are and precisely why we use them. But suffice it to say, the bacteria need those various elements at different points in time in order to be able to create the food that the plant needs. CO2 is generated in enormous quantities in the deep substrate. That's one of the main things that happens in that deep substrate. It creates carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a building block for plants. Without it, they cannot break it down and release oxygen. They cannot build the fiber. They're made primarily of carbon. They extract the carbon from the CO2 release the O2 as waste, which we breathe. That's how the animal kingdom live in a remarkable and beautiful and perfect harmony with each other. So CO2 injection is wholly unnecessary, not just unnecessary, it's counterproductive in a deep substrate system. It creates a false growth in one aspect of the plant's growth cycle, such that if it's terminated, the plant frequently will die or wither. Whereas if you don't inject CO2 in a deep substrate system, the plant will learn to take CO2 out of the soil. It will not be affecting the water column, which means it's not going to be changing the pH. It's not going to be creating the kind of stress that CO2 injection creates on a tank. If you're looking for plants, boy, do we have plants. We have a wonderful package of stem plants, 16 different species of stem plants in one package. You get 
four to five stems each for only $59 and $10 shipping. The link is below for our Shopify store. What plants grow in sand? What is this about plants growing in sand? Well, there is a, a weak force in nature called the Brownian effect. What the Brownian effect is, we've all seen it, but we really don't know, don't understand that it's actually a force. If you have a marble in a jar of sand and you shake that ever so slowly, the marble will rise to the top. That's the Brownian effect. If you leave it still and don't move it at all over a much longer period of time, the marble will rise to the top. So it is with the soil and sand. If you'll notice when you create your sand strata with dirt below it, in a relatively short period of time, you see dirt moving up into the sand. That's the Brownian effect. What that's doing is providing nutrients in the growth column, in the growth strata, where the plant's roots are. So they then are able to take advantage of that, along with the bacteria that are living there, to create precisely the nutrient they want. Without that sand, well, for one thing, all of the soil, all the dirt, all the nutrients get in the water column and they foul the water. At the very least, they make it cloudy, but even worse, they create all kinds of, of uh, organic life and organic activity in the water column that overwhelm everything else. So by separating the soil from the water with the sand, it creates through this Brownian effect an opportunity for the nutrients to rise up in the sand and for the roots to be able to take full advantage of them. What are the aerobic and anaerobic needs of plants? Now we hear lots about the aerobic needs of plants. They need oxygen. Well, okay, they need oxygen. They also need the very opposite of oxygen. They need CO2, so they need both. But what happens at the hair root level? The hair roots on the roots, those are actually the little guys doing the work. And what do they do? They surround themselves with an anaerobic environment that has the bacteria in it that break the nutrients and compounds or the organics in the soil to create the very nutrient they need. That happens anaerobically. So anaerobics are a critical part of that process. If the roots go down into an anaerobic layer, they will blacken and die. So the roots don't go into that, but they do take full advantage of whatever anaerobic is caused below them that's causing through this Brownian effect for the nutrients to rise up in order to reach these little tiny hair roots. That creates growth, a natural growth, a normal growth. We've all seen examples of stupendous growth that occur with CO2 and fertilizer. That's unnatural growth. It's not growth that's sustainable. It's not growth that is healthy for the plant. The natural growth that can be stupendously fast occurs as a result of these natural processes that are occurring in the substrate. When this occurs and all of these steps are completed or fulfilled, the stems receive all of the nutrients they need. The leaves receive all of the nutrients they need. Then they are able to, to do their job for the plant and produce buds, produce stems that create flowers. A flowering plant is the healthiest possible plant. It is a plant that is filled with all of the richness that it needs in order to be able to be a perfect plant. As it begins to the flower then, the plant is signaling to the bacteria through these tiny hair roots to create the very material that's needed, the very nutrients that are needed in order for the plant to flower. Certain kinds of plants that we use popularly and frequently in the tank that do extremely well in this kind of environment, we call them the low-tech plants. They are primarily stem plants, although a few are rooted plants. 
such as the Valisneria, the Swords, Anacharis, Hornwort. Those are not in the soil, although Anacharis will grow in the soil. It will send roots into the soil. And when it does, that's when it really explodes in growth. Hornwort has no roots, so it's growing in the water column and is taking up the nutrients that are getting into the water column. So it's helping to keep that water clear and clean and pure. Plants, the primary function is to recycle or to cycle nutrients. That's what it does. It cycles nutrients. It takes what is sifting down into the soil through all of the waste material and it converts it into plant material, which it creates in the water column, which then breaks down and, re and recycles back through the soil into the nutrient base and back up into the plant. The fish are in a symbiotic relationship with the plant because the fish not only feed on the plants to some extent, they feed on the microfauna, the algae that are growing on the plants. If you see a fish nipping away at a plant it's not typically eating the plant. It's eating the microfauna and eating the algae that's growing on the tank. By virtue of that creating waste, which becomes a nutrient for first of all, the microfauna in the tank, the microflora in the tank, the bacteria in the tank, and ultimately the plant. So a full cycle is created with plants, fish, soil, and a sand cat to create an aquarium environment rather than a mud hole for us to enjoy and to be thrilled with. So learn to follow these simple steps. Pay attention to them. You won't have any difficulty at all growing plants in your lovely deep substrate aquarium. That's all for now. I hope this has been helpful. I know there are a few things here you probably haven't heard about and you might want to do more research and find out more about them. We have more videos. We have discussion going on on our uh, Father Fish Shoal link down below. By the way, uh, the raw footage for all of our videos is posted on Patreon. If you want to see all the blurps and giggles and, and burps and, uh, and mistakes, that I make in the process of doing these, join us on Patreon and, and you'll be able to watch Father Fish in the Raw. <laughs> nice to be with you. Love you all. And uh, we'll be seeing you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>